Jerry, are you ready? I am ready. It's been a long time. It has. But do you know what time it is? I absolutely know what time it is. What time is it? Time for Jerry J. Rob. Cover it all. Absolutely. And it it's good to be back. It is. Man, I missed you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in like three weeks. Yeah, well, you know, um, traveling and sick and life. Our family got sick and then we were getting over it. And y'all were out of town and then you got sick and just things happen. Things happen. Life gets in the way. Well, we're out of order today. And there's a very good reason for that. We have a special guest. Yes, we're here with Miss Brittany today. Hi. Well, Brett, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm excellent. Did you notice we swapped seats here too? Uh, it feels awkward. <laughs> you, it really <laughs> does. It does. Do you have any idea why we swapped seats today? Uh, because you told me to sit here and <laughs> I said okay. Well, that's, yeah, I mean that's that's true. But I assume there's there's a, a better reason than, than just trying to there is. make me feel uncomfortable. There is. There is currently a show out right now called Six Feet Apart. Uh huh. And even though it's a little, uh, you know, maybe a little exag exaggeratory, um, the, the overall message is good. It's talking about a couple of uh, CF people who have cystic fibrosis. And today, our special guest, Ms. Brittany Wagner, thank you for being here, of is course. a uh, cystic fibrosis patient, as well am I. So, all right. We have to maintain our distance and, and air hug it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is kind of, okay. which which I'll be honest, is kind of sucky. It really yeah, is. It's really weird. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that I connect with, and that you know, it's it's different. It's you know, if, if you have people that have cancer, or if they have, um, you know, a blood disorder or something like that, <coughs> that they can fall into a category of having something in common. There's nothing that keeps them from hanging out with each other or coming into close proximity, but we can't do that, right? Yeah. No problem. So so probably uh, most most people that are going to be watching us right now uh, don't know a whole lot about what you just said. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what cystic fibrosis is and why we have to separate. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to give it to our guest. All right. Well, okay. well she's Brittany important one here. Okay. So Ms. Brittany Wagner. Okay. Tell us about you. Where do you come from? How many kids you got? What, um, are you I'm, social security numbers? You know? <laughs> I'm from the Austin area, so Liberty Hill. Okay. Um, I do have two kids, a two-year-old and a newborn. Um, had a CF my whole life. Born it. I got it at two. Well, not got it, but diagnosed at two. Because so. you caught it, right? You yeah. Just, unfortunately, caught I caught it from <laughs> someone. <laughs> just like, you know, COVID. You don't catch it. But, it's genetic. Yeah, it is genetic. It is a lung disease with um, digestive disease as well. But overall, it affects almost every aspect of your body, your right. life. It's not just lungs or digestive. And, right. You know, from me to Jerry, you know, you're not going to catch anything from me, or I could potentially catch something from you. But if I'm sitting next to Justin and he has a certain bacteria, my chances of catching his bacteria are extremely high. Okay. And once we kind of catch a bacteria, you almost can't get rid of it. You're Good kind stuff. of stuck with it. It will just keep regrowing in your lungs over and over. So we're very contagious to one another. Oh, okay. So they tell us, you know, keep your six feet distance, which obviously we try to do. I've right. been told that my whole life. Right. But it's very hard to do when that one person you can connect with so well right. and you're forced to keep a distance or have an internet conversation or a phone right. conversation it's very discouraging and right. it's very hard that you can't sit there and just connect with somebody that goes everything that you've gone through especially us we've gone through a lot of a similar experiences and yes you're stuck just like talking across a room from one another it's that's true I, I benefited from Brittany being the guinea pig and some surgeries that, <laughs> that I had to you know forego as well and uh, she was very open and um, you know, candid about it, and she sent me pictures of some of the stuff that she had to have done. She basically had to have her face taken off, her skull removed, and I did the same, which I'm glad I did. Yeah. Um, but at first, you're like, you're like, what? Am I going I have, have my what removed? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, no, that's okay. I think I'll put that off. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so a lot of things. Tell us, kind of, you know, what's what's a, a day in the life of a CF right now? 
from your perspective or, or from your household? Uh, from my perspective, I think it's changed a lot since kids were involved, since the kids are involved now. Um, I'm not going to say I put myself on the back burner because I don't, but it's much more of a struggle trying to deal with kids and keep track of your health. Like, right. my kids don't want to sit with me while I'm doing a 30-minute treatment, like, and I'm hooked up to my treatment and can't physically catch them to go out of the room. Or So that's, it's a lot harder nowadays than what it was when I was just taking care of myself, you right. know? So it feels more of a, like a hassle to take care of myself nowadays or more of a struggle than what it did you know, when I was much younger, but right. treatments two, three times a day. I always had my albuterol inhaler on me at all times, you know, to keeping up with the medication part, the treatments, the physical treatments, I think what is the hardest for me, because you're stuck in that chair right. doing those treatments, not moving. You know, you can take your medication anywhere, but I think the the physical treatments are what's my hardest and what I'm struggling right. with currently trying to juggle that well taking care of right. two kids <laughs> no you're, you're right so it, it takes up a ton of ton of yeah. time which you know you've kind of been indoctrinated into it because you were born with it yeah. right off the bat so in my circumstance i didn't have it immediately mm -hmm. which is unusual yeah. um and furthermore i had a couple kids which is also unusual so you have people usually don't have or aren't uh, you know yeah. yeah can't have kids um because of all the reproductive issues and mm -hmm. causes as well um but we we came Back, we worked backwards, so yeah. it was uh, my son who was born in 2010 uh, was the second kid in Texas to come up positive on a on the blood test that from the hospital. So yeah. they had just enacted it that year or that month, and um, uh, by Dr. Ben McWilliams, which yeah. I think you were yeah. you're probably a patient of his at some point, and then uh, my son was born. He came back positive for it. He, he clearly had digestive issues in the mm -hmm. beginning, looked like a little Ethiopian kid, his little yep. distended belly, and little tiny appendages. <laughs> um, so he, he came up positive, and then my daughter came up with some weird stuff that they couldn't put their finger on and finally figured out it's because we got some kind of hidden genetic something somewhere yep. that affects her mildly. She's pretty normal <coughs> for the most part, doesn't have any lung issues yeah. or really, really much of any sinus issue. Just every once in a while something weird happens. But then when I was 38, um, I started having sinus problems and I went to a regular ENT and he went in there and tortured me really bad. Yeah. Um, you know, they want to go in and fix your deviated septum and do all mm -hmm. that other stuff when they first see it. And he got a hold of me and he said, yeah, we need a, you got a bunch of polyps, we need to clean that out, we need to fix your septum. And, okay, go ahead and do your thing. And um, he did the surgery, and then when he got done, he came and looked at me and said, "Dude, there's something wrong with you. I don't know what it is, but yeah. there's something ain't right with you in your in your face." Yeah. So I'm like, at that point, I already knew probably what was coming. Yeah. Um, so at that point, uh, let me back up. They put tampons in my nose, and yeah. it was the most horrible yeah. thing ever to get those pulled out of my face. Yeah. Don't do that. Ever. Stay away from that. Um, so I remember we, we I went with the family, we went skiing, we were on a ski trip up the mountain, and then uh, Dr. Mick Williams, he calls me, he says, hey, I said, hey, I was in the middle of eating a pizza, and uh, he goes, well, I guess you got CF. <laughs> okay, thanks. Here's my pizza. <laughs> so, and thus started the journey for me, yeah. and uh, so now our entire family revolves around it, but my point saying all that is, you were used to kind of doing the treatments from the get-go. Yeah. It was incredibly hard at age 38 to say, okay, I'm gonna take two or three hours out of my day to yeah. deal with this stuff. And basically it didn't get done because I'm running, I'm going, I'm doing, and it, you know, excuses are excuses, but I just didn't get it done. Yeah. Um, but I digress. So <laughs> tell me more about you. I'm here all, all the time. I can talk about me anytime. <laughs> um, let's see. what. Where should we start? Um, so your kids, I, I have a couple, couple questions. Okay. So you say that your son has it, mm -hmm. and he's more severe than correct. Your he's daughter. The, he's the most severe. So do they not have the same gene type, or is it what makes has it have they explained to you what makes him more severe than what makes her more severe? He has a um, uh, double D F five O eight. She has one. Okay. I have one. Okay. Um, 
but there's something else out there floating around that we haven't been able to find. Mm -hmm. and so a random genetic. Right. So we've, okay. we've even done a genetic test on it and they couldn't find it when they did yeah. that. Okay. Um, so we don't know what it is, but there's something out there that obviously decided to come into play when I turned 38. That's just um, interesting. But yeah, it's, it is strange. It's strange like, how it worked out. When I was younger, you know, I was, my parents were told, you know, she wouldn't make it till her teens. Right. And then it was, my teens came in the early 20s. Right. And now, you know, nowadays it's 50s or whatever. So it's just mind blowing to me that all the way at 38, you made it 38 years with no treatments and no medications. Right. Like, that's mind blowing to me. Because if I miss a day of treatments, it will mess up my whole week. And right. I'm like, okay, I feel like crap now just for missing one day of therapies or eating a meal without taking my enzymes I'm regretting it the rest of the week like so that's so crazy to me that right. you can go so long and it just not it just didn't affect no you in that yep. horrible way like, it just never turned you know I, I'd have crazy. some upper respiratory stuff and, and you know sinus infections every once in a while you know but nothing that was predominant yeah. nothing that just caused chronic issue yeah. and it was so I mean I, I felt it when it when it kicked off I felt yeah. it and I thought man I do not feel good um, but yeah so that's where we are. That's what yeah. we do, and I yeah. said, kind of, kind of in the same boat, kind of not. Yeah, like I, my CF, I feel like it's very, I wouldn't say mild, but definitely not as aggressive as others. Mm -hmm. My lungs are okay, but my digestive system and my sinuses are the worst part of my CF. They right. affect everything. Right. My lungs, they, I mean, they're pretty good. I mean, I'm sitting in like the 80 percentile for my mm -hmm. lungs, which is pretty good. But um, of course, going, I was healthier when I was younger, and then I hit like my mid 20s and got very sick i think i did one year the year i stopped working was 2020 2014 when i stopped working and that was when mick williams told my parents like it's time she stops working you yeah. know i had had like six or seven hospital stays that year i was doing months and months of IV antibiotics and unexplained like i couldn't figure out why i was getting so sick constantly turns out i had mac infection mm -hmm. you know That's abscess true, and um Avium, which is horrible, you know, right. that treatment course is awful, right. but, you know, going through that and having, being on that for so long, it almost just, it brings you down to a level that you're, like, why are, why is nothing working for me? Why are, all of a sudden I'm healthy for all these years and then my lungs just plummet out of nowhere, right. and then an antibiotic can come out and it fixes you for a little while and then you, once you're off of that antibiotic you plummet again and it just makes no sense that your lungs grow these infections your entire life that soon enough you're immune to these antibiotics and the only antibiotics right. that can help you so i feel like that's a huge downfall with the cf community is that you're relying on these medications to keep you alive but you're bound to right. be resistant to them and then what's left for you to, to take what, what are you going to take after that it's, or or you have another Allergic reaction, like yeah. like my daughter does, and then you have to you know have to be hospitalized just to take the medicine. Yeah. Take, it's further, you know, it's, yeah. it, it on and on and on it goes. No, you're right. You're right. It's it's 100 percent correct that she just kind of keep running through the cycle. And it, it's, yeah, it, it's it, it gets old. Yeah. It gets tiring. Yeah. It wears you down. It's, it really does. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Jerry, well, you had said something earlier about how. Being a CFer, you know most most CFers have difficulty if they can have children at all. Right. And so you you have two children, and you have two children. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your kids and and you yeah. know how how like how about. that has been how your CF has affected uh, all of that. Yeah. Um, I knew I wanted kids very early on, but I've been told by my doctors many times that it might not happen. And I have a lot of female friends with CF, and a lot of them cannot have children. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I was like, if it hasn't happened yet, it's probably not going to happen. And me and my husband did try for many years, and it just wasn't happening unexplained. Like, I felt like I was so healthy. Why am I not having children at this point? Um, I was on many drug trials. Like, I was in the Orcombi drug trial. I was in the Kaleidico drug trial. And... Those just were horrible for me. I mean, I took myself out of one of the drug studies because they were plummeting my lungs. Nothing was right. benefiting me. And I still was not getting pregnant on those medications. So then um, Tricapta came out and I started taking that and I heard that women were getting pregnant on that and I thought, this is the drug. This is gonna make it happen for me. And it didn't. It didn't happen for quite some time. So 
me and my husband started doing foster care. So we went into the foster care um, and did all that for about three years. Um, so our little boy is two and a half and we adopted him through foster care. He came to us at birth. So he's been with us his whole life. And during those times we still tried to get pregnant and I did get pregnant twice and had two miscarriages and they kind of blamed it on the CF. Like there was no girl reason why I, why I was miscarrying. And the doctors could just tell me it's not compatible because your body's not strong enough for this baby or, you know, I was told all these different things by the doctors and why I couldn't, sorry, <laughs> um, why I couldn't. Sounds uh, like you were successful. Though. Yeah, I was successful, um, which totally came as a surprise. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. And once I got pregnant with her and it kind of stuck, I was like, okay, this is maybe not a girl issue and the drugs are helping me now. Right. And I took the um, Tricapta religiously because I was like, this is going to be the medication that helps me you know make a larger family and after you know I started to lose hope after the two miscarriages like I thought you know maybe this just isn't for me maybe my purpose maybe God put me here for my purpose to help other children who don't have that stable environment or you know if I'm not working and I'm staying home to take care of myself I can take care of these babies as well right. so I think we've had four newborns in our home and we took care of all of them Three of them went back to family members, but our little boy Oliver is the one that we adopted and he stayed with us. And I felt like that was my calling. And then all of a sudden I got pregnant for the third time and it stuck and the whole pregnancy, I was like, something's about to happen. The CF will do it again, you know, and it didn't. And she's here and it's been a crazy ride. So it's amazing. It, it is amazing. It's amazing. I truly did not think it was possible. You want to bring her over here and introduce her? There's <laughs> Vanna White. <laughs> and what is her name? Her name is Violet. Violet? Violet. She's precious. She's pregnant. Violet and Oliver. She is precious and life is precious. Yes. And so one thing that, that people may be wondering is, so you, you have CF mm -hmm. and God has blessed you with this wonderful yes. gift. Yes. Uh, but how how was that affect her? Like, does she have it? Does she have um, um, traits for it, or is well, that something you know already? We kind of don't. I mean, we did have my husband tested, okay. which at the time I did not care to have him tested. I thought, you know, if God wants me to have a child with CF, then that's right. just how it's going to be. I don't want to go through the testing and worry about it my whole pregnancy if she's going to be sick or not. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, look how old I am. So even if I had a baby, I'm the perfect example of, I know how to take care of CF, so I got this if my child does have it. I had no doubt in my mind that I would be able to raise a child if they had CF. But anyways, of course, uh, Mick Williams and Dr. Fulmer kind of pushed me and pushed me to, he needs to be tested. you got to get him tested. So I kind of did it just to please my clinic. And we got him tested, and it came back negative, which I was very surprised because in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, luck, right? God's put me through all of this. <laughs> my luck, I will have a baby that has right. CF. Not that that is a bad thing, but I just knew it was going to happen to me. But he got tested and he was negative. So they said, well, since he's negative, there's no chance that she can have it. She'll just be a carrier. So same as my mom or my dad. They're just going to pass the gene down again. And when she decides to have children, she'll have to have her partner tested and right. go from there. They have a baby with CF. But as of now, no, she doesn't. But she does have really bad acid reflex and little thing. And in my mind, I'm like, right. well, I have bad acid reflex. Right. So right. what does that mean? And she's having some tummy issues. So I'm like, wait, wait, why does she have tummy issues? <laughs> this, is that she's for me? Baby, that's what they do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just all these thoughts are running. I know she's fine, but just some of the little traits. You're I'm the like, mom, you're the parent. It's, it's, yeah. it's what you do. So it, that, that's the whole thing is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. The, the Trikafta phenomenon, which, you know, we, we're all appreciative of that new medication it's you know has some residual side effects that, yeah. that are not always so awesome but you know CFRs are getting fat now yeah. uh, CFRs are having babies now and it is correcting that that problem on the cellular level which mm -hmm. which is a pretty cool thing and it's interesting because I actually worked with a girl in like the next cubicle over and she had CF and neither one of us knew it Ooh. and we we're right next to each other this, this entire time and I happened to hear her on the phone talking 
to Medicare about something, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get some some health insurance stuff lined out. And I'm, now I'm like, well, I know all about it, right? Yeah. Because this is what we do. This is this is our job is is finding insurance for ourselves. Yeah. So I um, <clears throat> I went over and said, hey, what what do you got going on? Is there something we help you with? Because we we got lots of yeah. experience in this field. And, and she laid it out. I'm like, no way. You know, you've been here this whole time. We worked, you know, over a year together, right here. Neither one of us Ooh. do it. Um, <coughs> How did you not hear that cough? Did she not have like, she a certain She didn't have a lung cough? issue. She didn't have a lung issue. Hmm. Just like I don't have a lung issue. Um, hers was all sinuses yeah. as well. And then also digestive. Because yeah. She was super thin. And then she started taking track captain. And then she started putting it on. Yeah. Um, She's pregnant now. And she just got pregnant. Yeah. So oh, that's, she, that's great. She, um, Kind of retired from where she was at. And yeah. She moved back to uh, her home state with her family, and uh, was going to raise her baby there. It couldn't be more excited. So, yeah. to me, that's awesome. It's it, it's uh, a game changer from the yeah. death sentence that you received in the eighties and nineties, yeah. you know, um, to what we have now. So. Which is so interesting because I read an article that Tricapt always puts out there, the CF Clinic and stuff, or CF Foundation, and they said last year at this time there's only two hundred people or 200 women that were pregnant with CF and since Trikapta came out over 600 pe people were pregnant wow. within the whole year wow. and I'm thinking how did it not even it didn't just double like it tripled how quickly right. women can get pregnant now out of fear for me I was like you know I don't want to get through pregnancy again like that was very hard on me it was hard on my CF that after I had her I was like we're gonna have to tie these tubes because <laughs> I can't chances and that was my fear I was like I could get pregnant again because it's that common nowadays for CF patients, and I just didn't want to put my body through it again. You know, I'm 34, I didn't want to go through that struggle again, but I was like, I cannot believe that's even a thought in my mind that I might get pregnant again. I need, if I don't want another child, like I need to take precaution. And it's crazy that I think that way when I wasn't thinking that way two or three years ago. That right. was not on my radar at all that I would ever have to worry about getting pregnant. Right. It's just so crazy how yeah. track after works. Completely changed. <laughs> God bless us. So one of the things that um, you had you had talked to me about previously is the rarity of, of this condition, and just right. so so just how many people are affected? It's by something. It? It, it's something like seventy thousand total, I think, worldwide, yeah. in, in like thirty in the United States. Um, I, I believe it originated uh, in, in some European countries mm -hmm. back in the day, but it is rare. So it's, it's not like cancer or or uh, something like that that gets a lot of attention so the research has always been lacking the mm -hmm. research has been very shallow um, because there wasn't enough people dying to create interest in it yeah. and it didn't have the interest of government or researchers or anybody else so what ended up happen is, happening is the CF Foundation came to fruition and then uh, was very proactive in raising funds and raising money and basically all this medication has been privately funded through the CF Foundation. Um, and then, you know, they, they've kind of kept themselves afloat with that, and then as medication has come out and gotten better, um, they've, they've been invested in it. So that's kind of how they pay themselves back for, for putting all this money into it as well. So without that, you know, it, it, and people, you know, how money's distributed and how CEOs and, and uh, cabinets work on that end, you know, I. You know, some people don't like it and how it's set up, but um, at the end of the day, we have a medication that's that seems to work pretty well. So yeah. Otherwise, we'd all be doing what we do. But we it does only well. affect a certain amount of people that can actually take that's true. this drug. That's true. Isn't it like 10 or 20 percent that can only take Trichafta, and the rest, because it only affects the double delta gene. That, that's the right. Of the time. But at the same time, I only have one. Yeah. And I take it, and it, it helps me. Um, okay. And I, I can feel a difference. Uh, with all of this, yeah. when, it's, when it's working or when I have it on board. Um, and the same for her, she doesn't have as many problems, even with just the one Delta. So there's lots of people, there's lots that can take it, lots of them that can't. Yeah. There's some that go back to the old stuff, like you mentioned, or Combi and some yeah. of the other things. And um, that's, you know. 50% can't yeah. take it at all. Yeah. yeah. They don't have a drug yet. 50% can take it. So there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, it doesn't cover. But mm -hmm. for, for some of us that, that are lucky enough to be able to take it, then it, it works pretty well. It's a blessing. It's it a is that. Drug. It, it is that. For, for many, it is. So, so overcoming. Mm -hmm. Started out here sickly all the time. Yeah. Kind of improving. Put a little weight on. I, I, I yeah. would assume you did. Yep. Um, 
You got you got a baby? Got a baby. You got a foster kid, which mm-hmm. that's a whole other story on its own. Yes. Yeah. We have actually been down that road a little bit. We didn't mm-hmm. we didn't finish up because then this one came along. Yeah. Um but the the foster system is difficult. Yes. And it's and it's I won't go as far as say it's hurtful. It's, it is. It, you, you're constantly being let down, let down, let down. You, you take care of a, a little baby or, or, or a young child and you've got them in your care, you pest them, you care for them, you love on them, and then they're taken away. Yes. And just long enough to get attached and yeah. fully parent mode and then they're taken back away. Yeah. Um, and usually I would argue probably not for the best. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you prevailed in that scenario. Yes. It took four, but you got a little boy and now. Now he's he's your family, and yeah. you know, I know he's loved. I know his grandparents love him. Yes. Um, and then and then you know you, you know you've uh, accomplished having a baby on your own, which yeah. is awesome. So yeah. I love it. That's pretty phenomenal. That trip was great. <coughs> it was a fun experience. It's, it's hard, a good experience. Hard experience. Yeah. And I, I didn't even think I would be approved for it because they ask you all your medical history, all the medications. They're you're definitely on. up in your business. And when I saw all that, I was like, oh, they're gonna they're going to turn me away because they want to know how often are you in the hospital? Right. You know, why do you go to the hospital? What drugs are you on? Mm-hmm. That I was like, once they see this list, they're just going to turn me away. And right. it was, I was felt very defeated before I even got started. But so, you know, it, it, of course all worked out. But even with when I had to do hospital stays, I still had to notify everybody and fill everybody in while I was hospitalized. Like, and I would be questioned, well, why are you there? Right. Where's the child going to be while you're there? Who's caring for this child? And I was just like, this is, it's just so right. hard. I mean, it's hard on every foster parent, but I feel like they're a little harder on somebody that has something medically wrong with them because they see it as, well, how can you care for this child if are you having trouble caring for yourself? How are you going to care for this child that needs all the care that they could possibly get? Luckily, you know, we had an amazing caseworker and none of that was an issue, but it was very discouraging in the beginning yeah. trying to yeah, I can get see. it started. And, and, and rightfully so. I mean, you don't want someone that's totally, you know, you know preoccupied with yeah. trying to take care of themselves. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you have a backup system. You have mm-hmm. a complete family, not just yourself. Yeah. That, that the child can fall back on with your parents, um, which is also a good story. I think I started mentioning it to you a while ago. Mm-hmm. How I even came to know uh, Brett was through her dad. Her dad was uh, APD officer and uh, recently retired. So I knew him through that and through um, another friend of ours, mutual friend, and I worked on their air conditioner, which is funny because there's no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> so I would worked on their air conditioner one time and then I was out at my property and I was clearing out a bunch of brush and stuff. And then I had this old cedar tree that had knocked over and I was trying to push it out of the way. Of course I wouldn't wear my gloves. And I had this root like just stick me in the hand, like old wooden dried up root that just stuck me in the hand and I pulled my hand off and it broke off in there. So I pulled, got as much out as I could and I thought, man, I hope I got it all out. Well, the next day I looked at it and it was like a hot mess and I'm like, okay, I don't think I got it all out. Mm-hmm. And I'm in there trying to dig around and get this stuff out and I can't get it out. I mean, it's, there's something in there that's pretty big, I can't get it out. And then I'm trying to find some lidocaine to put on there and I'm trying to cut it with a razor and get in there and dig it out and I'm like, I can't get it out. Can I get it out? So I finally just give up after a day or two because it's looking really bad. And I go to the emergency room, the Round Rock, and then lo and behold, I run into Brittany's mom, who I didn't know was her mom at the time, but she comes in and she's like, all right, what's this crybaby in here for? We got a splinter in his hand, <laughs> chopping up our emergency room. And I'm like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I can't get it out. I don't know what to do with it. I, I don't know what to do at this point. I can't go to the, in fact, I think we went to a, emergency room center they're like no we're not touching hands right. sorry you're out so she uh takes me in nonetheless you know even though you, you feel like you're stupid for being there and doctor comes in he gets in there he's like oh yeah there's something in there somewhere and um i'm really shot my hand full of stuff and then i could feel him digging way up and then i'm like man that hurts really bad so then they stick the needle right in the hole and just like <laughs> put all that lidocaine in there and i'm like oh man i don't feel good at all <laughs> And then sure enough, he gets in there cutting around and yanks this big piece of wood out and uh, life's good. So we get to talking and I can't, I can't remember what, what started the conversation. Because you're saying my son gets his port flushed every month, surely I can handle this. Oh yeah, I was bragging around my kid being tough and <coughs> me being a wiener. And, uh, and then we, her mom caught on that he had CF and then we got to talking and then kind of put it all together. 
to power. That was really cool. So, no such thing as coincidence. Yeah. When it comes together. Well, you had also mentioned digestive stuff, yeah. which is a big deal. And uh, for you guys that don't know, you have to, or most CFers, many CFers, have to take what's called enzymes. There's a certain uh, pancreatic enzyme that's a supplement you take. You have to take it with every meal. If you do not take it, you do not process the meal. So the upside of being a CFer is you can have as much sodium yeah. and fat as you want, unless you're on Tricapta and then it makes you fat again. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's one of the things that they have trouble with. They have trouble gaining weight, they have trouble hanging on to weight, um, and then constantly uh, dehydrated and, and low on sodium and, and uh, other vitamins and minerals as well. So when, when my kids out working or sweating a lot, we really got to work hard to keep him hydrated because yeah. he just looks like a, you know, a salt bed on his leg, yeah. like I want his arms and stuff. But um, but yeah. So what else do you want to share with us? What is what else is going on that that most people may not know that's interesting? Well, um, Even if it's not interesting, go ahead and tell us. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on in my life besides the children? Um, really, not much. Um, I did want to ask you about the surgery that Eskew did. Yes. How do you think, was I right with all the information that I told you about the surgery? Or did you yes. have a different experience then? I would say that mine probably went smoother than yours. Huh. Okay. I think that mine went, went a lot easier. And I didn't have, like when you sent me the pictures of you and it looked like you went through the windshield of a car. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that looks rough. That do looks I like want to do this? That looks like that's going to be really painful. So I put it off for a year. Yeah. I didn't do it for a whole year. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, I didn't have any facial bruising, except maybe, I think right in the corner of my eye, I had a little bit, yeah. but the rest of the face was fine. Um, he stapled me back pretty clean. I mean, you can see it a little bit there, um, but it's most of it's back together pretty good. Yeah. But like, I remember waking up with the bandages on my face and my eyes and just being able to breathe through my yeah. nose. It was like, oh, this is wonderful. It's this the is, craziest this feeling. This is so nice to just be able to breathe through yeah. my nose. And um, he, he texted me all the pictures and stuff, and I'm like, oh. I know. Oh, it's, my, it's my head, man. <laughs> you know, you, you, you shows you pulling off the front of your skull. Like, you took off my face? Yeah, you took off my face. <clears throat> you pull your face down, like like the movie Face Off. You just pull your face down. <laughs> and. Cut your skull, take it off, put it on the table, leave it there for a couple of minutes. Go in there, obliterate all your sinus, your upper sinus cavity, and all the uh, mucus glands, I guess. And then they cut your gut and suck out some of your fat in your belly. Uh, not an optimal way to lose weight. Uh, yeah. And condense it, make it a little bit harder, then shove it in your face, and then put your skull back together so you're officially a fathead. Mm -hmm. And then staple your head back together on top of that after they put the titanium screws and stuff in your face. Yeah. So um, it went really well for me. I, I wish I had done it earlier. Yeah. I was very afraid to do it. And uh, I appreciate you sending me the information yeah. and being you know nice enough to call me and talk to me about it because I was like, I don't know. It's a real surgery, yeah. but very worth it. Because yeah. I, I got it, and at the time, I think only a couple people had had it, yeah. and everybody I talked to had a horrible experience with it. So I was like, great, I yeah. don't know if I want to do this. Of course, I went through with it because I was like, I'm tired of being in this hospital. Like, right. I, would, I felt like I was there just so much and missing out on a lot of my life. Just not that I was hospital bound or anything like that, but when you're, you know, in your 20s and you're trying to live your best life and you're trying to work and then right. you have to take off work to be in the hospital for two weeks or you're constantly on IV antibiotics, it's not fun. You're either in the hospital or you're homebound because the antibiotics are making you so sick to your stomach that you don't want to do anything. That's right. I was like, I got to change something. Something's got to change because this is not the life that I'm supposed to, I'm not supposed to be, maybe I am, but I just felt like <laughs> I'm not supposed to be. The one you this. want for sure. Yeah, like I don't want, this might be my life, but I don't want it like this. Right. It's something we kind of briefly yeah kind of touched a while ago was the insurance side of things and, yeah. and we're set up so backwards for healthcare. Yes. and uh, you know i, I understand i am I'm, I'm for a capitalist system i'm for less government on just mm -hmm. about everything um but when you the way we're set up is to kind of punish those that are trying to go to work yeah. trying to do a little extra by pulling their insurance away, mm -hmm. pulling their benefits away. 
I can tell you that most CFers in no lifetime can ever afford the medical, medical yep. attention they get. Um, it runs millions of dollars a year, and when you're on, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, whichever one it is, I can never keep it straight. And also with private insurance, you know, we keep private insurance as well. All that stuff together, it's it's still crazy expensive. Very and when you go to work, which is if you're capable, is what you should do. Mm -hmm. You should get a job and contribute. Try to have private insurance. But the way it's set up is you go to work. Well, you don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't need yeah. you don't need any assistance anymore. And they yank it all back, and then you're stuck. Mm -hmm. So then you're back in the the boat of okay, I guess I'll just live in poverty and yeah. stay at home and just live off the government and do the best I can. The bare, bare minimum too. Yeah. The help they do give you is very right. small. You're like, how do I live off of this right. every month? So either I work and don't have the insurance that I need to help me cover these medications or help cover my life pretty much, go to work and have that bare minimum or stay home and get basic coverage and live so little that you're like, how do people live like this? Right. That's where we're. At. That's where I'm at. I'm like, I feel okay. I mean, I say I feel okay. Days are hard. Mm -hmm. Living with CF is hard. Trying to keep, especially at an older age, you know, when you're younger, the younger times you were like, I'm more active. I can cough this stuff up on my own. I can do all of this stuff on my own because I'm more active and I'm younger. When you get to that older point, you're like, wow, my lungs are definitely feeling it nowadays. Like, they were good for so long, and now they're they're struggling just like I am. Like, mm -hmm. they're not keeping up the way they used to. And to go back to work and try to get back to that lifestyle that you physically on some days feel like you can. Right. You're like, oh, today I feel good. Like, I would love to go back to work today or be contribute to society instead of being at home and thinking, is this supposed to be my life, just living at home in these four walls? Like. Right just taking care of myself, like what kind of fun life is that for anybody? It's almost more depressing than, and I have so many people like, oh, well, you're lucky you don't work, you get to stay at home all the time. I'm like, do you know how boring? And th that's not a life to live no, by just taking care of yourself. It's, and, it's more or less a shut -in. Yeah, it's like, I, I wake up a lot and I'm thinking like, what is my job here on this earth? Like, why am I here? What is my purpose here? My purpose is not to stay home in these four walls and make sure I do my, 45 minute breathing treatment three times a day. Like, that can't honestly be my purpose in right. this lifetime, which led to foster care. But, right. you know, just to have that mentality of like, everybody else that gets up, has a purpose to get up and go to work and fulfill their life. And you're just like, oh, here's another day. Like, what day is it today? You know, like, that's why I'm like, what day works best for you? So what day do y'all do podcasts? Cause every day is like every day to me, you know, right. like, right. it's just so crazy that they expect you to kind of live this way that, yeah, it's it's not it's it's not right, but it, it is what we have to deal with, and it's, yeah. that's how it goes. And I, and I totally hear what you say. You know, some so there are, there are days that I want to go out and do stuff. I'm a motivated person. I have a lot of drive to do things. But there are days that I don't feel like it. Yeah. There are days that it just it's just too much. I mean, just like our, our summer, we've had a brutal summer this summer. Yeah. It's been a hundred degrees every day. <laughs> and for me, going out, and this is where I do have a problem. Is just trying to stay hydrated yeah. enough to do something and I can't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And then it takes me a day or two to, re to recover that yeah. uh, because I give it off so fast that I can't get it back in yeah. enough time. I could be drinking the entire time, it doesn't matter, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't keep up. Yeah. No. no, I totally hear what you're saying, that's, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> what else, what other unique things do you have in that basket over there of Wagner Life? What else could? What else is there? That's about your husband. How he's dealt with it. Um, he's very supportive. Um, which back to, leading back to nobody knows about this disease. When he, when I told him, I'm very upfront with people that I have it, and he's like, "What is that?" Like, didn't he's never even heard of it. And to me, I'm like, "How have you not heard of this?" Like, to me, this is such a well-known disease. Like, how have you not heard of it? Yeah. And he knew nothing about it. And then you know, I teach him about it. Now it's always like. Hey, did you do your treatment? Did you? And I'm like, okay, mom. Like right. I had that my whole life. Like you don't need to ask me. But I have to remind myself, like, oh, he's just this is him, his way of caring, you know, his way of showing that this is how he can support me. But it's the same, you know, as my, like if I he could tell I'm dehydrated or if I haven't had enough salt or I'll crave salt. Like right. if I've 
out doing anything, I keep little beer salts in my purse that I can just dump in my hand and eat the salt. Like, it's so crazy that your body feels like, I'm like, I need salt right now. Like, mm. and, and he'll be like, hey, did you bring your salt little thing? I'm like, I got it. Or he'll, he has my pills in his car. Like, he just, he's very supportive with it. Um, very supportive with hospital stays. He holds down the house, you know, when I'm gone. I don't know how he'll do with two kids if I go in the hospital, but he's good with one kid in the hospital. But um, he's he's always there. He's very supportive. Um, make sure I eat. Make sure I do my treatments, pills, insulin. Well, kudos to him because that's yeah. a lot to take on, it, especially when lot. you really don't know yeah. from the, the beginning what you're getting yeah. into. I know the first time we heard it, we're like, is that like, is that like multiple sclerosis? Yeah. Or what, what does that mean? I don't. And it, he doesn't realize like how much it actually affects. A lot of things like I'll be like oh my joints hurt today he's like why would your joints hurt and I'm like oh that's related to CF he's like no it's a lung disease and I'm like no, well no it's everything, it's everything. Right. and then a while back I was like really bloated and I was like oh I'm just like so bloated today and he's like why would you be bloated I'm like well I did take my pills and I ate something and I'm just feeling it. he's like what do you mean it doesn't affect your diet and I'm like where have you been like <laughs> yes like are you missing are you missing things right now yeah yeah. It's like, it's something, he almost learned something new, like, every, like, he didn't know that CF can cause diabetes, and then I got pregnant, and threw it into overboard, like, insulin shots, like crazy, and he's like, I don't get why you'd all of a sudden need insulin, and I'm like, oh, honey, <laughs> it affects everything, it doesn't just affect the lungs, it affects my whole life, like, right. it's just crazy, that right. it's a lot for him to learn, though, a lot. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you, you, know, you hit it on the head. I mean, that's that's everything. It's, it, joints for me. I mean, I've had most shoulders worked on, mm -hmm. surgeries. It's, it's joints hurt all the time. Oh, They're always messed up. Um, <clears throat> so arthritis, osteoarthritis, all that good stuff at a young age, and yeah, it's not pleasant. Not pleasant and, at all. Yeah, and like a lot of the doctors that you do see don't aren't familiar with CF either. So mm -hmm. you're going and you're like, hey, my joints hurt. They're like, oh, I'm not sure why CF would cause your joints to hurt. Or, <laughs> They've never heard of CF, so they can't right, right. put put it together. So very few doctors can put, they're like, oh, no, this is CF related. Like, it took me forever to find a good OB that would know how pregnancy works with a CF patient, you know, or finding a, a joint doctor, I can't remember what they're called. Rheumatologist. Yes, rheumatologist. Finding one that I was saying, no, this is related to my CF. And they kept telling me, no, there's no way. There's no, we'll test you for lupus. We'll t and I'm like, no, it's nothing. I know it's nothing like that. It is my CF, and I, there's just not many doctors right. out there that can specialize with CF that can keep. That's why I refuse to leave the CF clinic in Austin. I yeah, because I because I know you, and they, yeah. they got you down, and, and yeah. I can't yeah. imagine yeah, I, any I, other I doctors. <laughs> like, I hear you all the way on this. Even though it's a pediatrician, I'm like, I'm never leaving. Like, I'll be 50 going to this pediatrician because <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere else. Okay, final question for me, and then I'll let Jerry finish yeah. it up. What is the dumbest cure you somebody's given you to, to rid you of CF? Oh. I'm gonna bet it's essential oils. <laughs> I've heard that. I, yep. Yeah. Mm. I've gotten, especially with digestive system. Have you tried a diet? Yeah, do you, you, do you, you diet better. better? Yeah, you should eat better. Yeah, you should eat better. Um, have you tried to eliminate gluten? Gluten's oh, killer. I'm like, maybe yeah, of some soy products. Yeah, like I've heard those. Um, not many people have much to say about the lungs, but they do just assume, well, why don't you just get a transplant? That's that, just the easy fix. Yeah, and I'm like, you got extra lungs down the street. Yeah, I'm like, that's not how it works. But, you know, um, but yeah, especially with the digestive part, like alternate your eating, like yeah. change your, do you drink enough water? Yeah, I need some more water. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I, should, I guess I should drink more water throughout these years. <laughs> like, little, our, little things like our that. Our best one by far has been. Uh, you need to eat some pine bark. French, and that <laughs> French, French pine, oh not gosh. not uh, not Spanish or Croatian, mm. but French pine bark. Yeah, and that will take care of it. <laughs> next, time I, next time I go to France, I guess I'll make out with a tree and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have heard a lot. Have you prayed enough about it? Yeah. And that just gets me because I'm like, of course I've prayed about it. Like, <laughs> that's my number one. Th I'm very. <laughs> It sounds like a good segue for the pastor here. This yes. is a good point too, right? That just well, I me mean, if if you had faith, yeah, then had obviously faith. you wouldn't have problems. Yeah, that's right. You know, my wife, my wife has lupus and mm -hmm. Sjogren's and APS, a couple other things going on, and um, so that's that's something that she has heard. She's heard it all. Yeah, you know. And it's just sad that people kind of resort to that. It's like, of 
course I'm religious, of course I've prayed, but I've prayed a lot, so if it's not going by now, it might, it might just not go away, you know, like... Yeah, and, it's, and it's not always God's will for yeah. for people to be healed. Exactly. Um, but you know, uh, with with that thorn in the flesh, He always gives yeah. enough grace. Yeah, that's so, to make it through. I'm like, if He wants me to have this disease, He gave me this because He knows that I can fight it. He's not going to give it to me to take it away thirty years down the road. He gave me this for a reason, and I'm stuck with this for a reason. Yeah. You know, I don't think He's going to give me anything that I can't handle so and they said <laughs> probably never have children mm-hmm. now you got a beautiful yeah. little girl over there yeah that's wonderful that's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. okay well is there anything else you'd like to share with us that, I, that we didn't ask you i don't think so i think we covered a lot I mean, yeah Okay. It's just fun. Well, I'm going to take a minute to thank your family because yeah. your family has been there for you, and yeah. um, you know there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. And what what people don't realize, maybe if you've been involved with a cancer situation or some other situation, you and being totally invested in helping that person get through that scenario, a lot of times that that has a conclusion. It has a they, they either make it through or they pass or uh, something happens where it finally has a conclusion mm-hmm. and this is one of those things that never has a conclusion and it just keeps going and people do not have the bandwidth to stay hanging with somebody yeah. in the dumps for forever right. so uh, kudos to your family I'm, I'm gonna say the same right. to to our family yeah. and how much that they've been helped um, I'm also gonna say thanks to the Georgetown Police Department because when we first got introduced to see we had some terrible insurance and yeah. we had a tremendous out-of-pocket expense that we had no feasible way of oh. taking care of and uh, that police department came together and, and put on a benefit for us and they paid nice. every single dollar of it yeah. which was amazing for us um, it also showed that mm-hmm. uh, in these situations that God does take care of us yeah. and it's not just being out there on an island. So uh, thank you Georgetown PD and thank you uh, to the family, our friends, and those that have stuck by us and, and dealt with our problems because it's it's our problems but you know it becomes everybody else's when yeah. you hang out with us so yeah. uh, we appreciate that very much. All right anything else? Anything coming up? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. We have uh, my granddaughter's surgery is September the 9th. Okay. Uh, the Gatesville Car Show is the 15th, so we're probably not going to make it to that one since we'll be taking care of the baby, but uh, I know that's been something that's been on our radar. Yep, yep, there's one in Mobile Falls as well, I think, pretty soon, and we have a we have a Viper thing that we're doing in September, but other than that, I don't know, I don't know, maybe we need to have a party to do something, that's a not. Sounds good to me. Party for CF people. <laughs> yes, a, 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 CF, a CF thing, that's for sure. So I'll, I'll also add to the YouTube version of this a, um, um, a tab for the CF Foundation, and you can go there and donate. Uh, do, you, do you have one right now? Do you have a GoFundMe or anything like that, yeah. or um, a walk, walk stripes thing? I did do walks for a while, but I haven't. In a long time. You know, we're kind of in the same boat. It's it's a good thing. Um, my mother-in-law ran one in Houston, mm-hmm. and we did it for years, and it. It's funny because it, 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 was, it took so much out of her and us yeah. trying to put it together and it's a lot of work and it you're is. like, man, I just need a break from this yeah. for a while. So um, we went this year to the Austin one, it's the first one we've been to in a oh. while. So, but, but yeah, I'll put some links on there. If you guys want to donate to that, you're welcome to donate to the CF Foundation and, and uh, we would really appreciate it. So thanks for being here. Oh, yeah. Thanks for opening Absolutely. up. I know it's a lot of private stuff, oh. but somebody out there is struggling and yeah. you need to hear it. So yeah. I, I appreciate it. Very well, you know, one thing that I didn't hear in all of this yeah. is I didn't hear either one of you complain yeah. or, you know, just, just be down, yeah. uh, you know, just having a smile. And even though things are what they are, uh, we can, we can stay encouraged and stay motivated. Right. Yeah, stay positive. Being yeah. negative is not going to get you. It's not gonna make anything go away. There you go. Good advice. Coming from actually in the same boat, just a a different (laughs) ship. (laughs) All right, but you guys have a great week. Thank you very much, Brittany, for coming in, spending some time with us. We appreciate it, and um, we'll catch you next week.